Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at Lenovo's latest ThinkPad Ultrabook. This is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, follow-up on the X1 from the spring of last year. A lot thinner, a lot lighter, uh, definitely a better display, and we're going to look at it now. So this is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. It's going to be available in August of 2012, and it's a, it's a very nice Ultrabook with a lot of improvements over the original X1 that we looked at in May of 2011. Notably, it's almost a pound lighter. This guy is three pounds. Also, the display resolution and the display itself have changed. One complaint that a lot of folks had about the X1 was the glare from the Gorilla Glass display. When you think of ThinkPad, you just think hand-in-hand -hand with matte display. So while it was nice for durability's sake to have Gorilla Glass, it just made the laptop a mirror. And lastly, Lenovo tends to like that 1366 by 768 resolution, and that is a pretty common Ultrabook resolution, but given that this is a 14-inch display especially, power users wanted more, so now we have a 1600 by 900 resolution panel. And it's very nice, color saturation is good, viewing angles are fairly wide too. Yeah, you do have to do a little the forward-back angling thing to, to find the, the perfect sweet spot there, but Overall, as TN panels go, it's, it's one of the best TN panels you're going to find on the market. And there's the rub. Sadly, still no IPS option like you get on the ThinkPad X230. That was something we hoped for for the X1, and it's still not here. I, I imagine that's because Lenovo is trying to keep the cost down, but this is already a fairly expensive machine, so I say, what the heck, give us that IPS option. Well, everything about the exterior and the build quality is pure ThinkPad. Yeah. Everything about the inside is pretty much pure Ultrabook. You're looking at Intel Ivy Bridge 3rd generation Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs. Now, Lenovo goes a little extra and they offer some higher clock speed options for both the i5 and the i7 with VPro for you business users. But you're still looking at, well, ultra low voltage. And these days, that performs pretty well for productivity, for business tasks. That's Lenovo's bread and butter with the ThinkPad line. Just fine. It can stream video, it can play video, no problem. Uh, a heavy-duty computing machine, obviously not compared to the ThinkPad X230, which has full mobile CPUs, more power there. Like the X230 and like just about every Ultrabook on the market, this has Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics. In terms of ports, well, we've got a decent but not super impressive selection of ports here, despite the, well, it's a 14-inch chassis. They did try to get as close to a 13.3-inch in size as they could, but we're not talking a uh, super abundance of ports here. We do have the fingerprint scanner right here. Works with the trusted platform module for logging onto Windows, logging to websites, that kind of thing. And on the sides, we'll take a look, and you can see just how darn thin this thing is. Very nice, very thin. Tapers a little bit to the front. Classic ThinkPad look with that raven black soft touch finish. Very nice looking. It picks up some fingerprint oils, but you just take a damp rag and you wipe it up and totally clean. Usual ThinkPad logo here, and logo over there, and your sleeping hard disk indicators over here. So on the side, we have full size SD card slot. We have a card in that slot right now. We've got our combo mic headphone jack, mini display port. Now, I know some of you may go, oh man, I really want HDMI. Well, you can get an, a dongle adapter that's 20 bucks or less to, to turn this mini display port into HDMI, but this does give you versatility because this can also output to very high resolution monitors that use display port technology. We have a USB port right here, and you'll notice Lenovo doesn't color code them, but we have one 2.0 and one 3.0 port, and uh, neither is marked blue, so that's kind of a pain. You're going to be staring at it until you memorize which is which, but this is the high speed port right here. Security lock slot there. And this interesting little door here is for the optional 3G feature. So you can stick a full-size SIM card slot in there and use 3G. Now it is 3G, it's not 4G LTE. On this side we have a USB 2.0 sleep and charge port. This is your wireless switch right here. And this is your charging connector. Notice this is not your little round barrel connector like on just about everything Pan ever made. We'll show you the new charger that you get. Standard looking charger here from Lenovo, except for look at that end here. So no backward compatibility with your old Lenovo ThinkPad chargers. Sorry about that. One neat, neat thing about this laptop, like some other Lenovo's that we've seen, it has rapid charging technology. This thing can charge up really, really quickly. In about 90 minutes you can charge it full from being completely empty. In about half an hour you can get it up to about 40% full. So it, it's really handy. You don't have to be glued to an outlet forever if you need to just top up your power. And speaking of battery, it is sealed inside, typical of most Ultrabooks. And We've got a bunch of 
Phillips head screws here. Well, not too many actually. And then you can unscrew these to remove the bottom, and it is just not much fun to do that. Usually we love to take these things apart, but once you unscrew it, you discover that some of these screws are actually holding the battery in place too. It's a pass-through kind of screw, and some things seem to be affixed to the bottom plate. So opening this guy up, well, it's certainly more challenging than even a lot of other Ultrabooks that are not particularly designed to be opened up. With other thing pads, and even with the X1, the way you got into the internals was the more standard for Lenovo way access it through the keyboard here. You used to be able to release two screws on the bottom and then pull up the whole keyboard plate, but here we have a unibody design here. This is all one single plate and the little chiclet keys are just sticking it right through the single plate, so there's no taking this plate off. While we're looking at the keyboard, this is Lenovo's revised keyboard. I like it a lot. I know some of you really miss that print screen button and the sysrec button and stuff like that. Those are gone, but Really nice tactile ThinkPad, lovely keyboard to type on. Now, the travel is still reduced here compared to Lenovo's standard size, size notebooks like the T420 or even the X230, but lots of tactile feel, good shape, nice sculpting to the keys, backlighting, it's two stage, you hit the FN button plus the space bar to turn backlighting on and then to set it to full brightness. Usual row of FN keys up here, and here's your volume controls right here in your mute button and your microphone mute button, your Think Vantage button, and there's the power button. And they've changed the trackpad a little bit. This is a glass trackpad. I like it quite well. Works nicely. Synaptics trackpad. You still have the embedded buttons up here with the little eraser stick pointer that's traditional for ThinkPads, but here we have a buttonless trackpad design. So there's no discrete buttons that you'd be clicking on here, and I find most of the time it works pretty well. A couple of times I kind of wish for the older style trackpad myself, though. You got your arrow keys right here, page up, page down. So despite the relatively small size of the machine, you, you've got most of the good stuff there. One FN button. Shift key, but shift keys are oversized, caps locks oversized, backspace is oversized. So yeah, it's a type of stream, like I said, a little bit shallow, but other than that, if you're getting a machine this thin, you're gonna have less travel on the keyboard. And you'll notice while I'm doing this, the uh, the interesting thing about the X1 is it does the full open thing. now. I don't know how often this will be useful for folks, but for those of you who feel like you just can't quite angle the display far enough back, let me tell you, it's clear you're going to be able to angle this one pretty far back. <laughs> and now for some comparison time, we have the X1 Carbon over here, obviously, and this is the Asus ZenBook Prime UX31A Ultrabook. Comparable specs for the internals, other than the vPro processor option not being available on Asus. Just about the same size, 13.3 versus 14 inches, and you can see the height and the depth are about the same on both of these. Now the Asus has a 1920 by 1080 display, and it's IPS, also very bright. We're talking seriously bright. In fact, you can see that it's blowing out a little bit in order to keep the Lenovo exposed properly, because even dropping the display down on the Asus, well, it's just really bright. So though we like the Lenovo display, and there's certainly a lot of improvement there in terms of resolution, I'm not even calling for full 1080p, I think a lot of people find that too small, but uh, the, the IPS really does make a difference. More sharpness, really nice and easy on the eyes, they're both matte. So that's really what the, the ASUS really brings to the table here. In terms of build quality and solidity, they're both really strong. The Lenovo has a carbon fiber roll cage, that's why it's called the X1 Carbon, instead of the usual magnesium alloy roll cage. That allows it to be lighter, but it's still incredibly rigid, very durable. You could use it to hammer in a nail, probably, to be honest. Of course, the ASUS is also incredibly rigid, very solid metal. I've managed to dent doorways, bruise a rib with it, but I have yet to put a mark or a dent on it. So both pretty sturdy. In terms of software and support, that's another thing, and this isn't a smackdown, but just so you can see the difference in displays there, even on the desktop, I'm, ASUS still wins on just this one point. Now when we close them, Just about the same thickness at the back. Lenovo is a little bit thicker, and it's thicker at the front. It doesn't do as much of a taper. So a different look there. It depends on what you like. Shiny, sleek metal versus that really nice, rubbery, soft-touch ThinkPad look. If you're a ThinkPad person, you're going to think this is very attractive, most likely. And for those of you who are sure that you want a Lenovo product, you're just not sure if you want the IdeaPad consumer line or the ThinkPad, here's the Lenovo IdeaPad U310. This is the consumer product. Obviously a very different look. Really, really cool looking, the, the IdeaPad U series, but wildly different. They do that kind of book thing here. You have the contrasting white along the edges. You get a colored lid, metal, nice and solid. 
it may not be as bulletproof certainly as this guy, but pretty solid and about the same size in terms of footprint. And when you take a look at them open, well, it's certainly night and day as much as white and black, isn't it? Very uh, nifty consumer looking product here versus the stayed black internals. They both have excellent keyboards. Uh, Lenovo does not know how to make a bad keyboard pretty much. I would give the edge to the carbon though for the keyboard. And one thing I want to mention, there is no Ethernet port built into the machine. We kind of wish there was for business machine because, well, business folks do tend to want Ethernet, but Lenovo does include a USB Ethernet dongle adapter in the box. Now, in terms of pricing and options, sit down. This is not going to be cheap. The base model with the Core i5, 1.7 gigahertz CPU, and 128 gig SSD drive is going to cost you $1399. From there, you can go up to $1500 for a Core i5, 1.8 gigahertz, a little bit faster, supporting vPro, also 128 gig SSD. For $1649, you get the Core i5 again, the same vPro compatible one with 256 gig SSD. And lastly, you have our model right here, which is a Core i7 ULV CPU running at 2 gigahertz with vPro, 256 gig SSD. That also, you can get 4 gigs of RAM, DDR3 RAM, 1333 megahertz, which is surprising. I thought it would be 1600 megahertz myself. Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics, the, the uh, 300 nit anti-glare display is standard at 1600 by 900 resolution. And it has Intel Centrino Advanced N6205S dual band Wi-Fi. Machine has Bluetooth 4.0, a 720p webcam, but very good low light. Lenovo really takes video conferencing seriously since again this is a business oriented product. Uh, it does work very well for that. You get Windows 7 64 bit professional. Now in terms of screen real estate, you can see we've got our web browser tucked into the side here. We could bring it even smaller. So you just barely have enough room to work with two documents side by side. If you want to scrunch things in a little bit, you can do that. Full 1080p or say the widescreen on the unusual Toshiba satellite U845W would get you even better side by side. But there's definitely enough room here to do that kind of thing. Also have some pallets hanging around the sides when you're using applications that make use of those kind of pallets and things. So good stuff there. In terms of performance, this turns in very good synthetic benchmark numbers. 12,339 on PC Mark Vantage, certainly helped by the fast 2 GHz Core i7 CPU and the SSD drive that's in here. 3 Mark Vantage numbers, not as impressive. It's really something. You can see uh, machines that basically are using the same CPUs, are using the same integrated graphics, same amount of RAM, and one can do Notice that there another. This one scores 2705, and again on the Toshiba U845W that we recently did a video review of, that scored over 3200, so a significant jump right there. Uh, clearly, Lenovo is not tuning this for graphics performance. It doesn't mean you can't use Photoshop and it, it won't be a passable experience, it's just fine for that, but it's really certainly not optimized for games. We're, we could actually play Batman Arkham City at native resolution with effects set to low on the Toshiba, for example. On this guy, you won't get a very playable experience at all if you're going to play at native resolution. For our Windows Experience Index, you can see the CPU did very well, 7.1. 5.9 for memory uh, seems to be what a lot of notebooks are scoring these days, other than, once again, that Toshiba. That surprised us getting a, a much higher number. We've got 5.9 for graphics for Arrow, 6.4 for 3D and gaming graphics, and 7.9, which is the highest score you can get for the SSD drive that's used in the ThinkPad, so good number there. And for those of you who think that SanDisk doesn't make good SSD drives, well, they certainly do, and they make the Extreme line that are good performers. I know there's been a bone of contention with P folks who buy the latest Asus ZenBook Primes, and they're hoping to get the A-Data versus the SanDisk. Well, this guy has a SanDisk drive, and it does very well in tests. The notebook has stereo speakers that are pretty loud, but a little bit brash sounding. Uh, and you can see here it has Dolby Home Theater 4 audio, so you can tweak with your settings, and we've just tweaked the settings a little bit to enhance the bass and then ramp up to the audible treble range for most of us humans. Definitely a better experience if you plug in the headphones compared to the speakers, but you will get plenty of volume, and we're going to test out a 1080p movie trailer so you can hear in action. So here we are playing our Hobbit trailer, and this is with volume set at 50%, so pretty reasonable, but not very rich and very full, but not bad. It's usable, certainly. The screen looks nice. Doesn't super duper pop, but it's nice enough and I appreciate that it's a matte display we don't have glare to deal with here. The ThinkPad Carbon X1 has a 45 watt per hour lithium ion polymer battery that is well obviously sealed inside underneath those screws on the bottom 
And Lenovo says it's good for up to 6.3 hours on a charge. Uh, while that's certainly better than the first gen carbon, which was only good for up to five hours according to Lenovo, it's still not really up to the Ultrabook standard where we expect to see real world use around six hours or so. So far I'm seeing about five with this. And we're going to do more battery tests, so be sure to read our full review to get the final word on battery life. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, available again starting sometime this month, August 2012. And yes, it's expensive. ThinkPads do tend to be expensive, but you know what? They also do a lot of coupons and discounts, so we're hoping that this guy becomes more affordable when those discounts do become available. Meanwhile, you're looking at $1,400 for the base model, going up to $1,850 for the higher end model. That's a lot of money. Now, if you have the money, if you're a ThinkPad person, you're sold on the quality, the way these guys tend to last, they're pretty bulletproof. The higher resolution display compared to, well, even what is available on the X230, let alone the older X1, then there's a lot of value there. There's the killer keyboard, uh, the three-year warranty, some really good things that they're offering. For those of you who are willing to consider a lot of other Ultrabooks that are on the market and consumer products, you're not particularly a ThinkPad person, well, there's obviously a lot of competition right now. There's a lot of models that have come out, and the, the ZenBook Prime UX31A being, a, no kidding, a prime example, with that 1080p display, that also very bulletproof metal construction, and a healthy selection of ports. We do wish, in fact, that Lenovo had given us at least two USB 3.0 ports, and not just one USB 3.0 and one USB 2.0 port on this. And it would be neat if they could do what Toshiba does, which is to fit every port known to man on an incredibly skinny notebook, like to do with the Portage C835 and Z935, getting things like built-in Ethernet in there, or three USB ports is kind of cool. But when you're getting a Lenovo product, you're also getting an awful lot of peace of mind. Now, with Asus ZenBook Primes, there have been some issues with quality control. Their support is, eh, it depends on the country you're in, but eh, not so good. Lenovo has generally speaking, very excellent support and a long warranty, and that really says a lot when you're spending this much on the machine, that you know you've got a company that will stand behind the product. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. This is Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.